So now we're up to Harbor Masters for everybody. I'm also known as Haba Master. Haba Master, sorry. What page is Harbor Haba Master? 24. 24. Twenty-four. Okay. I know that we started. Uh, I believe we had an article at town meeting where part of your was the deputy harbor master was going to be paid out of. Correct. Is that sh reflected in this budget? That is, uh, that is requested in the budget and reflected in the um, third line. It says deputy, and it should be listed in, under uh, FY other funds, 38,546. Okay. I had mine on. Would you, you like me to repeat it? You like Might be worth it mind? just for the. It's on now. Okay, we, we are reflecting the uh, other funding for the deputy harbor master. It's the third line item under 15. Um, for other funds so that's not coming out of the general as well as the uh, seasonal it might help too if you give us a status of your of the uh, permits and all the accounts that you have um, they stand. yep we, we do uh, we sell a variety of stuff out of our office shellfish permits dump beach sticker as well as harbor service permits. Harbor service permits, we've increased um, our intake to, without late fees and other fees that are associated with um, people not keeping their moorings up to date, we bill out and, just about 161000 We also collect about 45000 in boat excise tax. Um, beach stickers, I think we're averaging between 148 to 155000 <laughs> Uh, shellfish permits, we average around, I think it's about 68. Uh, on, under the shellfish licenses, we have 100% uh, of all commercial shellfish licenses get designated into shellfish propagation. 20% of the sales of recreational also go into the propagation account, and then the remaining 80% goes to the general. Yeah, I think one of the things on there is what few people would actually realize is how much revenue that the Harbor Master's Office brings brings into us, and they're the ones that have been, uh, well, along with the many hats, they that's the department Gary and uh, Marietta that have been helping with the parking kiosks and really making sure that that's been the success that it has. So I really appreciate all their help on that. And if you look at this budget. <coughs> You'll see that we are trying to trying to use in the in the legal manner some of the uh, some of the revenues that they have, and I appreciate uh, appreciate uh, Mr. Buckminster working with me on it because, in all honesty, there's other things that could be done with the waterways that could help uh, help with the boating and such. So we try to we try to focus a lot of our uh, projects under things that we can fund solely and it doesn't have to come out of the capital it doesn't have to come out of the general fund I mean obviously on our budget we do have to fund some portions I can't fund everything it's just not legally allowed um, it, so I, I we do have a portion that does come out of out of what um, you guys and Derek uh, propose to us or allow us to take um, but we try to offset things as much as possible with funds that are pretty much protected under state laws that we can't do anything else with. So. Do you have any big projects coming up? At least like in 15? 15, we, uh, 15, I'm hoping this fall is going to be a, 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 we've got a lot of building that needs to go on. We've got, we're, we're trying to do everything in house because it saves us money. So we're, we're um, building all of our own docks. We build Pretty much, we do all our own installs, with the exception of some bigger things like pilings and uh, things of that nature. So, uh, 2015, I don't foresee any big infrastructure changes, but we are we we are looking at a uh, 
uh, a few major issues uh, coming down the road. One is uh, the Tempest, uh, the onset boat ramp. Um, we're waiting for some funding f through the Bouchard oil spill money. If we get it, it's a, it's basically apply and try to um, see who gets the, the, the till. So onset boat ramp is in dire need of replacement, and we're looking at probably about 150 to 175 thousand dollars, and that's to replace existing what's there. You wouldn't, we wouldn't be making it bigger. We wouldn't be changing it. Um, the other thing is uh, is the onset pier. We're at its max life ec uh, expectancy with the metal sheathing. I pulled into the uh, pier the other day, well, not the other day, going back a couple weeks now, with our boat, and my wake washed up against the pier, and I had a cloud in the water. And upon further study, we have a huge hole on the side of the pier, and it's wa it's undermining all of the materials in the back of it. So, you know, we're going to be looking at obviously funding sources for that. Um, you know, that's a multi-million dollar project because they encapsulate the pier and the pier actually will be a little bit bigger than before because they just keep building outside of it. So that's probably, that's going to be one of one of the two big, big projects that I think we're going to start to foresee in the future. Yep, absolutely. Um, we without f uh, without f uh, fines and additional fees uh, under the harvest service permits, we bill out 160 thousand. About well, I'm sorry, 161. Yep, and then under uh, boat excise taxes collected, we do about 45 thousand. We also uh, generate through the beach and dump stickers. Um, I think I think I said 145 to 160 somewhere in there. Um, shellfish permits, we, I think I said, what did I say, about 68, something in that factor? 68. 68. It, yes, correct. Yeah, the largest, the, the, uh, one, the 161. So, and we usually, I mean, it, you can't, we usually, Get about seventeen thousand in, in fines and, and uh, other fees collected. Um, <clears throat> the, um, the the state has the uh, environmental police. Yes. If they come in and write a violation, where does that revenue go? <laughs> it goes to the state. It it's supposed to split it, um, but I don't. I don't know if we see much of that. It's. It's. They get federal. They get federal grants also, which is supposed to divvy up to towns, and we never see that either. So they've actually become. Uh, uh, they. They've really grabbed all their tickets because we. We can write under the the, uh, the 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 same chapters as them, the chapter 90B, chapter 130, things like that, and uh, they've actually stopped giving out ticket books on top of it. So <laughs> I'm not. We're not really sure what. Well, with traffic enforcement, I thought that we also got a, a piece back. I'm assuming a traffic enforcement. So I didn't know I, if it worked the same way. I, it's supposed to. It, it was supposed to go, a, a portion was supposed to go to the town. So it, that's why bylaw citations on our end of it are just better. But you can't, there's a lot of things that the bylaws just can't cover. Now, do you find that anything that you do is, is duplicate of uh, <coughs> what they're doing? Or um, do pretty much, we <coughs> don't see them very much. Um, you've got one officer that covers from Westport to Plymouth, basically. And he covers a little portion of the Cape. So uh, when I need them, I, we, we've got a pretty close work and, uh, work, uh, work and relationship with a few guys around here. Um, we've got a few friends of the department that will help us when we, if we need them. So, but it's, it, unfortunately we are doing some of those things they're doing, but we're, they're not overseeing nearly amount, the amount of stuff we're seeing. I mean, they're focusing their fleet in New Bedford, Fishing Harbor, you know, the, the big ports. So, and now like the Homeland Security thing is just, you know, blossom. So they're going to all these different things also. All right. Not to um, this, just so uh, for my own understanding, yep. what is the, um, what's, how far is your jurisdiction? Out? Everything within Wareham. It's just Wareham boundaries. We don't, we, we do fresh water, we do salt water. Um, it, it doesn't exceed past it, unless you do like a transfer of power. If, um, if, if I go into Bourne or something, I just, it's, it's like what the police do. We, we notify Bourne if a, a stop carries into their town and, and it would, it was, our powers would carry over at that point. Okay. So. And are there any additional areas that 
for instance, you could put more boat um, moorings in? or We try to keep what we have here. Uh, as much as I love boating, I want to see people use the waterways, I just don't want to see us turn the whole town into a mooring field. And I, and I, I mean, we could, we could wipe out the whole waiting list instantly, but we have a lot of areas that are protected under the bylaws, which are basically the same as open space. Um, and we try, you know, obviously we don't want to bleed into that, but um, I think what we're going to see over the next couple of years is, is companies coming in and we'll have an engineering firm come in and regrid the harbors. And what that'll do is we'll be able to, to actually uh, organize mooring fields to like boats, drafts, length, size, wind, current, all these different things, and they factor all this in. So we'll, we could actually put more in a smaller area, um, especially going with like environmentally friendly mooring systems, which you know something is something that's coming down the road. I just see, you know, if we're going to look at the master plan, so yep. to speak, of the, you know, we want to create, you know, Wareham as the, as a destination, yep. and, and we want to, you know, increase revenue that way. This this is the, I mean, that that's our um, diamond that that we have. It's to you know, we have a great waterway. It's navigable. It's safe. We have you know safe harbors. It's an area that we have a lot of transient vessels come in to anchor because. They, there's no other place to go. It's deep water. It's right off the canal. Usually once people, they're coming down the coast or they're heading up, this is where they stop because they don't want to run the canal in the middle of the night. They want to rest up. They want to do their deal. And this is, that's what we need to sit and look at. And the thing is, is you know, going back to what we pulled for the launch this, this fall, you know, it's not, this isn't something new. We have a lot of boats coming into the harbor. We sit there and watch boats come into the dock every single day and turn around and leave because there's no place to tie up. They, they don't want to pick a mooring up, and they don't have a dinghy to get back and forth. So what's the next best thing? We want to keep them here for a little while because I, I feel it's important for the businesses to thrive. So let's get them in here. And we charge on top of it. So it, it's a, it's, it really is a marketing tool for this town, and I think it's something we need. So. Thank you. Currently, I, as a town, I have three. Um, I've put in for an increase to ten. Uh, depending on pricing that we get. Um, but we also have, uh, I believe the Yacht Club has 29 moorings. All their moorings are transient. Um, Onset Bay Marina, I believe, has a few. And uh, Zecco Marina has a, has a mooring field where they can uh, rent some moorings out of. These are all licensed mooring fields for the uh, Army Corps of Engineers Coast Guard. Uh, correct. Uh, I think they have 29. So we want to up ours a little bit and then have the ability. A lot of people anchor, so. OK. Any other questions? Gary, thank you. Just for the, the general overview, with this staffing, is that adequate for this department? I am very pleased to be able to get another full-time person. That takes a lot of pressure off of everything that we've got going on. Um, that allows us to keep kind of a watchful eye on the evening hours, too. So um, we've already started setting up a plan for the summer of rotations for um, having that, that person with that additional training on staying later at night so we have a, a, a first-class operator there for in case we do go out. So it, that has worked out. The seasonal staff, uh, you know, I think we rely on the most. Um, it's, it's something that doesn't cost us a lot of money. We don't have benefits to pay. We don't have all these different things. Um, it, at some point, somewhere down the road, I definitely feel that the seasonal personnel would probably need to be increased, but not by a, a big number. You know, I'd like to see maybe two or three new seasonal people on top of our staff. We get um, seven seven people, and we it's a seven day a week, and we try to keep it open till ten eleven o'clock at night. So, I noticed that your uh, fuel line, your gas, diesel, and oil line, was knocked down from the original request. Yep. Um, is that realistic? Uh, with the unfortunately with the with the patrol boats we can't we can't bring them up to municipal maintenance to fuel them um, so I'm I'm stuck with paying you know marina rates so it, it does it does cost a little more uh, and I meant is so it realistic that we've been reduced from um, the fourteen five to twelve five is yeah we can manage it, it for that? yeah it's it's it, 
we we'll, we'll make it work. <laughs> so if you know we're trying to, like I said, that's another thing we're trying to offset costs with. So it'll be tight, but we'll get there. I'd rather see us make it through the year. <laughs> and, and you weren't here when I was asking the earlier question. Obviously, um, I think that your department functions beautifully. It's a real Thank asset you. to the town. Um, and you yourself do a lot of hard work in getting these grants, getting these programs, and taking initiative to improve it, which is hugely beneficial. Thank you very much. But in fairness to the other departments, I have to ask you the same tough question that I'm trying to get to the bottom of. If we have a we have to decide where our services come into the town, and that will not be this committee's decision. That will be up to town meeting with our board of selectmen. What do you do? What services do you provide that are absolutely, and I don't mean essential to yep. the community, but I mean legally mandated? Why, why do we have to have a harbor, harbor services? Both, uh, both titles are uh, under the state law. Um, under the harbor master, we are... Uh, it's listed that any town that uh, receives any waterways money through funding is required to have a harbor master, an assistant harbor master, and they set whatever they need. I mean, we, on the shellfish constable, it, it pretty much is the same wording. That's chapter 130, section 98, I think, um, it, to oversee the waterways. Unlike some states where, like, you go to Rhode Island, it's, it's a state operated across the board. So you buy a permit in Rhode Island, you're buying it for all of Rhode Island. In Massachusetts, they designated the waterways by towns to, to oversee it. So they, the state is turning all fisheries powers basically for shell fishing over to the towns to, to for regulations, bylaws, all the all the stuff. The permits are permissible because we're, it's water, it's state waterways which is again designated to the towns to manage, and we 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 fund as according. Uh, we 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 set up the fees as accordingly. So, on our fees, I mean we're probably one of the we're in the middle of the road on pretty much everything with with costs. We don't want to be overbearing, but we need to no, make I things happen. No, I know you've looked long and hard at um, that and reevaluated. You know, some of the things that we're looking at here, it's not it, we, we're looking at a natural resource. We we have we oversee the largest um, uh, harvestable product. It's not cranberries; it's shellfish. Um, our acreage is more. We've it, it's a you know we've got close to 2,000 people at shellfish um, it's it's we're dealing with health issues we're dealing with vibrio we're dealing with uh, things that could kill a person basically if we're not out there doing the water samples with the state taking in these areas managing the locations seeing what people are doing um, so it, on that end of it I think it's pretty important it's a it is part of a public health issue too so thank you Tentatively scheduled for June 1st to start operation. Um, I've actually, we just finished up our um, policies and procedures on it, regulations for users, and um, basically a fee structure that we're going to have to propose uh, to the town administrator. And if he feels comfortable with it, then we go to the next step, the board to approve it. So. Um, I'm actually, we're going to try and keep everything in house because it, it, what it is, it's a, um, you receive a certification to operate, which is just a launch operator's license. So all of our operators are drug tested. All of our operators have to go through a full physical. They get a Coast Guard certification, a Twix card, which is, which is part of the Homeland Security, uh, Department of Homeland Security. So um, I'm trying to keep it all in house with everybody that we use for all of our seasonal personnel. The people that are working in the office, they're going to be going out to, on the launch. If I have room to be able to hire some people at a lesser rate to be a seasonal launch employer, if we have people that apply that are, are certified, then um, that will just use seasonal personnel for that. So it, it will we'll have a season that we do run. Um, but I mean, you won't. You'll see me on the launch running it. You'll see the assistants on the launch running it. You'll see our deputies running it. And if we get a launch operator, uh, he'll you know he'll be the full time guy for it. So. It's added on to, we have to actually, because of the mooring rentals and the docks and everything, we have a, we're basically getting a, um, a marine insurance policy, and it's, this is, it's added on to the policy. So there, there, there are costs, but it's covered under the, uh, the waterways funds that we, we generate. So. so basically everything, everything that has to do with that is strictly done with waterways. It's that there's no, it doesn't come out of any budget line item. It doesn't come out of anything. It's, it's strictly paid by the boaters for the boaters to, for the use of the waterways and access there too. That's it? 
Wow, you're lucky you came in after pizza. We're all really happy. Thank you very much. Okay, we you. reserve the right to get back to you with other questions after we actually have a chance to pay attention to these. And we did reduce our budget, so. <laughs> and you're generating money. Yes, yeah, so actually the articles that will be coming up to town meeting will be for, uh, for those numbers to get where they're at, basically. So it would be for the seasonal, the uh, full-time deputy, and that's it. So... Um, so these these to the thirty eight thousand. Yep, correct. Thirty thousand will be um, articles. Yes, the thirty eight, the okay. five seventy two, and the forty thousand or five seventy something or other. Go ahead. Uh, I they're not even I they the, the, they don't even, I don't think they have them anymore. They don't even I don't think they have them. Yes, yeah, I yes. think, did, did, were you here for when uh, Chief Walsh spoke? He went over that. Yeah, he said they've re been returned to, they sent back. Uh, no effects, D different operation. Yeah. So. Um, leading question, was it beneficial to have them? And I don't mean to put you on the spot because I, I want to preface it because you were here. You were here for what I said. What I said to the police department. Yeah. So no, I, I should preface that because, because what I'm getting at is we're, we're at a bad spot. You, you've already, I think, you've already shown us how you work work to get things improving for long term. Let me just hear me out. Right. Ultimately, I'd like to get back to having that kind of a full community involvement. I'd like the ATVs and the. I'd like to have a thriving community that requires yeah. that. I I think. Where it stands right now, um, we have a great working relationship with uh, Lieutenant Walsh and Lieutenant Walchuk. Um, it's we've we've started to rebuild a, 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 a friendship of what we used to have, uh, which was lacking for a little while. So um, it's th there's a nice uh, level of teamwork going on with it. So and we've we've talked about different events, things like that, where how we could partner up and, and do some things. So it there's definitely a, a on my end of it there's been a nice change. So good. I Glad think you're I, with the jet skis in general, they're nice to get around real quick. Um, but they're basically a floating vacuum cleaner. You they pull things in, the drives, it's an expensive thing to when it breaks it, it's expensive to replace. We had one and it was not beneficial to us. It was nice to get around People didn't know you coming up, and all of a sudden you're there, but the costs outweigh it. Um, so. okay. And there's a lot of personnel, you know, there's personnel costs that follow that too, so it was a different manning. So. Thank you. But just to just follow up on that, I mean, you work in conjunction with a lot of other agencies too, the oh, environmental yeah. police, et cetera. Yep. You got a good working rapport with them? Did, yeah. You know, they pitch in, especially We've in We've actually built time. a very good relationship with the uh, State Police Marine Unit. So. Um, we, the, uh, the gentleman that's in charge of the state police dive team, he and I have been uh, doing a lot of things together. And he's actually going to be coming down with a few of their, their higher end scan devices and uh, they're going to be working with us on training and some other issues. So, and it looks like the state police are actually going to be putting a boat somewhere in Buzzards Bay, but we're not sure where. So we're trying to, I'd like to see him drift this way. Because uh, they're they're a pretty good operation, and that's that's you know they they let the state pay for it, <laughs> you know so. Good. I think you're off the hook. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Matthew Underhill our IT director and uh, probably the person that gets spread thinnest out of anyone around here so having him here is uh, is very nice and uh, let's hope there's no catastrophes in the meanwhile so the two departments that we'll go over if you look at it's page 14 of 40 will be the um, the actual IT department, and then a, another section called communications. And uh, you'd like to go over anything? Yet? Sure. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon.
Thank you. And those of you who don't know me, my name is Matthew Underhill. I'm the IT director, uh, or at least that's what my title is this week. Um, we've, as Derek has spoken, you know, we've got two budgets uh, to go over. One's communications, one's the actual IT department. Uh, communications is uh, strictly telephones um, and uh, other communications type uh, you know, budgets, whereas the IT is uh, computer software, licensing. Type of stuff. Um, and is your mic on? Excuse me, is your mic on? It is now. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Um, the uh, I'm not sure which department you want to start with. Uh, you know, we can start with either one. Uh, as far as the IT department goes, uh, we have uh, myself as the director, and we have. Uh, one tech support uh, person uh, who uh, I split with the police department uh, currently spends three days a week at the police department, two days a week here at the town. Uh, we cover 28 locations in town, um, you know, between uh, all the town facilities. Um, administrative wise, uh, on the schools, uh, the school departments use our financials, so we support them for the financials. Uh, as well as, uh, you know, we supply all the communications to and from all the buildings uh, over the town's network. Um. So the salary for the support technician is fully in the IT department, though, correct? C correct. Uh, we, uh, uh, as of last year, it was strictly under the police department, and uh, we moved it out from under the police department uh, for fear that uh, it was going to be uh, uh, cut for some other position. Uh, so we moved it out from the police department and put it under the IT department. Mr. Donald, would you like to start? Not really, because I can start. Okay. I can't stop. Uh, $109,500, software in the budget that's still contractual uh, I should what I'll do is I will actually email the, the board uh, all my detail um, I'm sorry but I kind of was off the list and didn't know about the meeting until this morning uh, on whoever <laughs> sent that list out so I will get you all the detail the hundred and nine thousand dollars um, <coughs> I will have to. Uh, that hundred nine thousand uh, dollars, sixty thousand dollars of that goes to Microsoft. Uh, licenses. It was licensing. Um, Seventeen thousand dollars of that goes to Citrix, which is additional licensing for the virtual servers. Uh, then we have uh, licensing for our web filters, right. our firewall, um, our uh, video surveillance systems uh, that we have in town. Uh, it's licensing for that, as well as uh, the communications to and from the cruisers uh, back to the police station. Uh, software that we use to allow that communications uh, is uh, we have to license that. That's all part of the software itself. Probably not, not the right time or place to tackle the issue of the virtualization because the 60K has is a direct correlations with that so even though we're paying 60k we're most likely not getting the benefit of that 60k at this point uh, that that Microsoft licensing itself yes we are getting the benefit okay. that is actually for the licensing for Microsoft Office uh, for the desktop for the end user uh, we have uh, three 200 computers desktop computers across the town as well as another 30 computers uh, in vehicles uh, mobile computers um, so uh, that is for the Microsoft Office and licensing as well as the Microsoft Windows and server licensing so we are getting the use of that that benefit okay uh, that was a uh, uh, a three-year lease uh, I shouldn't say lease it was a three-year purchase uh, with Microsoft um, next year this is the third year the next year it should go down because we won't have to purchase the it would just be an ongoing maintenance to make sure that we can stay uh, with the same uh, same releases 
um, uh, you know, of the operating system and stay up to date uh, as opposed to in the past when we had people running, you know, 10 year old operating systems uh, on one machine and the next machine had uh, new stuff and uh, you couldn't, uh, there needed to be a conversion done to transfer documents between one version and the next. Okay. If Thank I you. could real quick. Matt, with, the, with these licenses, so if another version comes out in the future. We automatically get it. You okay. get the upgrade automatically. So if, uh, you know, Windows 9 comes out and we choose to deploy it, uh, we would automatically get it, you know, as well as, you know, 2012 server from Microsoft that, that is out, uh, will be out re released recently. Uh, you know, if we choose to deploy that, you know, we can get that without having to go out and purchase it. It would already be included. Okay. Thank you. And uh, the, the police department has 16,000 in their budget for computer maintenance. Now, is, where, is there a crossover here? Um, in the police department's budget? Yeah. I haven't seen that, haven't spoken to the chief. Uh, that maintenance, my guess, is licensing with their, uh, their dispatch software. Do they have a payment system or what do they uh, use? They use IMC. Okay. And, all right, because when you mentioned the the software and that, the, the licensing on that, on, uh, you mentioned the police department and your 109,000. Uh, well, I'm, whereas the, they went through the IT department for uh, installing the communications to the vehicles, yeah. uh, that licensing was in mine. Uh, we haven't, uh, up until last year, the police department was pretty much autonomous, you know, as far as IT goes, and uh, they did their own thing. Uh, uh, we try, we're trying to uh, organize things and get the best use of staff. Uh, that's one of the uh, license items that is still under the police department's budget. Uh, we haven't brought that out under the IT as of yet. And if I may, uh, more prior to the time, well, to both of you actually, um, is the, um, do the water districts or fire districts have any, any, um, involvement with our system at all? Um, as far as, uh, you know, we do get some support calls. We do try to help them out once in a while. They don't have their own staffing. Uh, but as far as going through us, um, we do support uh, or we do have communications and supply the communications uh, to the onset fire station off our network. It was part of an agreement that we made uh, with the water district for them to allow us to put antennas on their water tower was that we had to uh, provide communications to the fire station, which at that time we had a police substation in the fire station, so it wasn't, you know, uh, a bad deal. Um, so they do, uh, they do grab our internet at the onset fire station um, from town hall uh, as part of our, our, our connection through our wireless network that connects all our buildings together. Thanks. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. How do you integrate your IT systems with the schools? Is there any integration at all? Uh, the only and integration that we have is it is one network. Um, you know, when we built uh, our wireless network, we connected all town buildings together as well as the schools. Um, the school department has their own firewalls. Um, the school departments uh, in all the schools do communicate and come back to town hall before they get uh, float out to the middle school, the high school, where all their servers are located. Um, the school departments do use the town's financial system uh, for their accounting and bookkeeping. Uh, and, you know, as far as student records uh, and the school department's email and, uh, you know, their website, that's all done by the school department's IT department. Uh, we do, uh, where it is one network, we do communicate back and forth a little bit, uh, you know, as far as trying to, uh, you know, when there's an issue, uh, but outside of that, uh, the school department has their IT staff uh, and uh, they maintain their own stuff. So you have, you're the IT director and you take care of the town hall. Uh, it sounds like the Wareham Fire Department has their own IT group. Uh, I, I'm not sure if they have their own IT group. I don't, I do not think so. I think they just, you know, uh, they got some personal computers in the, in their computer in their office, uh, and they try to do the best they can. You know, once in a while, I do get a, a call that uh, help them out in an emergency, 
uh, you know, and if I can fit it in my schedule, I'll try to help them out. Uh, but, uh, um, you know, as far as a, it's a separate fire district, separate entity, separate funding, uh, so for the most part, you know, they're on their own. Thank you. Compatibility. When, when you set up this new system, and I know they set up a new accounting system for the treasurer's office, is every department linked into that so that they can go directly through the network right electronically, right in, send their reports right in? Every department is connected on the town's network. Uh, the only two buildings that are not connected is the Spinney Library uh, and the police substation in Onset. Uh, you know, there are two in the newest buildings that were added to the town's, I guess, you know, the, the, the town's uh, responsibility, um, and they're too costly for us at the moment to connect those buildings. Uh, but outside of that, every department does have access, every department, uh, the, all the financials for the whole town, whether it be municipal maintenance, the sewer department, uh, the police department, the harbor master's office at the pier, um, all those financials, all their user documents are all stored at Town Hall. And they uh, so the Town Hall is a central hub for all the departments. So everybody's running <coughs> basically the same program, so they all are compatible. Yes. Everybody's using the same financial systems. Everybody's using uh, pretty much the same operating systems. I shouldn't say same operating systems, but they're all using Windows operating systems. Uh, they're all using the same uh, Microsoft Office products. Um, you know, uh, you know, as far as that goes. Now, each, each department does have their own specific software. You know, uh, inspections, there's a permanent licensing. Um, you know, assessors have their appraisal software. Police department has their own dispatch software. Uh, you know, so every department, you know, for the most part, does have their own specific software uh, that is specific to them. But as far as financials go, um, Yes, all the departments are connected and using the same software. Okay, thank you. Is, okay. is the town's um, uh, accounting soft financial software, is that a, a, a package? Was it a yes. It was off to um, we stopped writing our own software in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, and since then, we've been using package software. Uh, right now, uh, the vendor that we use <laughs> is uh, Vadar Systems, and our annual maintenance to them is uh, fifty-six, fifty-seven thousand dollars a year. Fifty-seven thousand dollars. Is this the time to address the inadequacies of that, or wait till we get to accounting? All right. So give me that number again, please. It is uh, $57,000. That's, that's just yearly support maintenance. And that's what line is that? Would that happen, which leading to my next question is what's that's, under that's other purchase services? Other purchase that, services. That, 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 include that? that is, uh, you know, our uh, financial software, okay. annual maintenance. That's the annual maintenance for our website. Yep. Um, it's the uh, annual maintenance for the assessor's appraisal software. Uh, as well as the annual maintenance for our email archiving unit. Ask it. In your estimation, uh, as far as financial and accounting software go, is VADAR not or substandard for what we need to be doing? We're on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Can't answer that question. Okay, let me try uh, again. As from an IT standpoint, standpoint. from an IT standpoint, from an IT standpoint, uh, we are a seventy million dollar business, including all our grants, and we're running off a of Microsoft Access database. Gotcha. That's all I needed to know. Thank you. The answer to that would be yes. It's inadequate. No, no, no. That was close enough. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Substandard. Um, Substandard. <laughs> That's more for the finance director and the town accountant to, to determine whether or not for their the services. Work. From the IT standpoint, we're using a personal software for a personal computer in Microsoft Office for our financials. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we should move on. 
Probably could have asked that question uh, eight years ago and saved some well, aggravation. Right. It was. We purchased it anyways. Um, good. I. What was the other about communication? Communications, communications should be. Yeah. I think it's page fifteen on the document. Derek handed. <coughs> Unfortunately, as it's not in that order. So. This is uh, this is telephones. Um, we get. Uh, that is broken up into, uh, I think um, let's see, I got it right here. It has its own tab somewhere. <laughs> so repair and maintenance. Uh, the biggest item there is um, the police department's phone system we replaced a couple years ago. Uh, the lease purchase is still built into that. So, uh, you know, outside of that, the 9,000 of that uh, 17,900 is still the lease purchase on the police department's phone system. Uh, the rest of it is, uh, you know, uh, annual maintenance on the phone system from town hall, municipal maintenance, uh, library, EMS. Um, you know, those are all uh, you know, the maintenance on those phone systems. Uh, the phone system in town, uh, the main hub is town hall. Uh, calls to the library, come into town hall, flow back there, sewer department, come to town hall. Uh, trying to get all our phone systems connected together. Uh, the voicemail system for the middle school, the police station, the, uh, um, the superintendent's office, the mining school, we're all at town hall. Uh, you know, so the, it, we're trying to develop a, a phone system in which, you know, at some point in time down the road, all the phone systems hopefully will be connected together so that we have a one phone number called a 311 system. You call the number and you can get the superintendent or the police department. You know, DPW without having to have, you know, uh, separate phone numbers uh, for every single department where people have to call. Um, so that, that's what the maintenance is for, uh, is to, for the maintenance and upkeep on the town's phone system. Um, the 25... $25,000 for telephone. That is our actual telephone bills from Verizon uh, for all the departments uh, <coughs> from, uh, you know, uh, with the exception of sewer departments. Those get charged back to the sewer department to the enterprise fund. Um, the rest of it is we have 109 telephone lines in town, including, uh, you know, s and then another seven emergency call boxes over at the beaches. Um, you know, in case there's emergencies. Our average telephone bill is uh, $2,000 a month. <coughs> uh, $2,000 to $2,100 a month. Is it web-based or line, landline-based? These are all landline phones. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, we've looked at, uh, you know, possibility of putting T1 lines in. Uh, you know, uh, problem with the sometimes with the T1 lines is you put all your eggs in a basket. You know, uh, especially at the police department, if it goes down, all your lines go down. Um, you know, we can uh, continue to look at something like that uh, for town hall. Uh, the problem with the the lease lines is there's some added expense up front. You know, to uh, to add some modules to the phone system to take in those. Um, about equipment replacement is this I mean this covers obviously cellular folks so is there equipment replacement in here as well or uh, there is no equipment replacement built into this um, the equipment uh, um, replacement I spoke to the capital committee uh, earlier this week uh, about uh, some upgrades to the phone system uh, we installed this system uh, eight years ago nine years ago and uh, you know some of the modules we've upgraded as, as we've gone along. Um, the, the main modules at Town Hall, uh, Avaya has announced uh, within the last couple of weeks that uh, they will no longer be supporting the, mo the release that we're at. And in order to go to the new software release, you, of course, you need a new module to go with it. Um, the telephone system itself, as the voicemail goes, and the auto attendant, that's all on a PC based. Uh, so that, uh, you know, wouldn't be upgraded. It would just be the switches themselves. So the 
this repairs and maintenance, is this all, do you contract out for people to come in? With these That's, awesome? yep, it's, uh, it's, we contract it out, um, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's break fix replacement of, of the system. Uh, so if, uh, you know, somebody drops a handset, you know, uh, off their desk, um, or if uh, the module, uh, like, uh, for instance, we had a lightning strike at the police station uh, within the last year, um, and they came out uh, that day and replaced the phone system at no cost to us, other than the annual maintenance on the system. So, you know, they've been good. Uh, the vendor that we're using right now uh, has been very good at that, uh, whereas if, uh, you know, something did break or by our choice or elsewhere, uh, they came out and replaced the systems for us at no hardware cost to us. And, and uh, you only have two employees, so you're all like a one on paper hanger. Correct. Uh, we, you know, uh, at, well, when I started, uh, you know, 30 years ago, we had two full time, you know, pe people, uh, in, you know, employees in the IT department um, for town hall. They ran one computer. You know, a dozen workstations and three printers. You know, we're, we're now branched out to 28 locations across town. Uh, you know, uh, you know from, you know, uh, the sewer department. Uh, you know, to EMS, to you know, computers uh, in the boats and the vehicles. Um, you know, uh, we also uh, you know have stuck with the responsibility of, you know, uh, video surveillance. You know, if uh, an issue happens at the police department, a break-in, uh, it seems to be our responsibility to go to that business, try to get their video surveillance of the event uh, to the detectives. Uh, you know, so yes, uh, we seem to be on call 24 hours a day now. Um, and, uh, and yes, there are, you know, with only two of us, we are pretty thin. Anybody else? Okay. Thank okay. you very much. I will not mm -hmm. ask you the same question that I've asked the other departments because I don't believe there's any legal mandate <coughs> whatsoever to have you. However, we would be lost without you, so that's fine. Okay. Thank you. And thank You're you welcome. Your physical. Uh, <laughs> what I will Stay do healthy. is uh, <laughs> I will forward, forward you uh, all my detail that explains, breaks down uh, every line item and what entailed in those line items for you uh, uh, so that uh, you have some to review. And if you have any questions, uh, please either email me or Derek or contact us and we'll get you your answers. And I apologize, I didn't get that to you earlier. That's Matt had provided that for me, so I should have passed that on. <coughs> I'm sure you can find our email addresses. Just, uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, it's uh, <laughs> it could be better, but you know, it works. It works. It works. It works. It works. That's all. Thanks. Thanks, man.